Welcome to this old camera. I'm your host, Azrael Knight, and today I'm showing you the Canon A1. The computerized Canon A1. This extraordinary 35mm camera gives you six different exposure modes, five automatic, one manual, each for a different application. The Canon A1 is a 35mm SLR released in 1978. It has a classic design and many of the features that come standard in today's DSLRs, including aperture and shutter priority. The A1 is the flagship of the A series of cameras, which included the AE1, AE1 program, AT1, AV1, and AL1, all released between 1976 and 1982. Accessories offered included the data back. Sorry guys, this isn't Y2K friendly. Also offered was the Canon MA winder that included a grip and the A series of speed lights, including but not limited to the 155, 177, and 199A, all offering automatic exposure. I love how this article in Popular Mechanics says the following. Camera makers don't introduce models just to hype sales. Enormous costs of research, development, and tooling, plus genuine pride in their products, are good reasons not to bring out a new model unless it offers real advantages. You have to wonder what happened. Some of the complaints of the time were the lack of a threaded PC socket and a slow shutter speed of just 1 over 1000. Competing models included the Minolta XD11, the Nikon FA, and the Olympus OM2. In the same way the iPhone 3 innovated the modern day smartphone, so did the A1 for the prosumer level camera. And just the same in a few years, all the other manufacturers had caught up. By 1985, Canon would attempt to innovate again with the T90, and while it didn't make as big of a splash, it would be a stepping stone for their EOS system, released two years later. From here we'll go over some operation basics. Then I'll show you some field test photos, after that I'll show you where you can get one, how much it'll set you back, and if it's worth it. To load a fresh battery, first remove this grip cover, then unlatch the inner door here, place an LR44 or equivalent battery inside, and reverse the previous steps. To attach a lens, line up the red dots and rotate clockwise. Some lenses will have a bayonet style mount, others will have a breech mount. The basic principle is the same. Turn on the camera by moving this switch on the top right from L to A. Place a 35mm roll inside, drag the film across, and place the lead in the slot. Make sure the sprockets are lined up and advance. Ensure the film is secure, close up, and advance a couple more times. To set the ISO, press and hold this metal release on the side of the left dial and rotate to the desired setting. To set aperture priority, ensure you have a lens with an automatic setting. Then set to AV by rotating the indicator at the shutter release. Switching to shutter priority is done by switching to TV, everything else is the same. To shoot in full auto, Set the dial to program in TV mode, located at 1 over 1000. To shoot in full manual, take the lens off A and shoot in TV. The exposure compensation dial is located on the top left. Its default position is here. That represents no change. To underexpose, use the 1 half and 1 quarter settings, which are 1 and 2 stops difference respectively. Settings 2 and 4 will overexpose by 1 and 2 stops respectively. You can set a 2 or 10 second timer by moving from A to 2 or 10. Once the film no longer advances, press this release button on the bottom, lift this lever and start rotating clockwise. You will feel a release and tension when the film lead releases from the feed. Continue to rotate a few more times to ensure the entire roll is protected by the canister. In addition to these basic features, the Canon A1 also offers the following. The exposure memory switch. Located on the left side, there are two round buttons. The memory switch is the top one. As long as you hold this button, the meter is locked, allowing you to meter your subject and recompose without losing your settings. Viewfinder display. You can turn the viewfinder display on and off by flipping the switch. A white dot indicates the viewfinder is on. Dial guard. If you want to make sure you don't accidentally change your settings, or if you plan to shoot in program mode, you can push this guard up here. Multiple exposures. To create double or multiple exposures, advance and take your first exposure, then push the advance up against the camera, revealing this second lever. Push that lever to the left, 
hiding it underneath and revealing a red dot indicator. When you wind the lever now, it will not advance the film, allowing for another exposure on the same frame. You can repeat this step for as many exposures on the same frame as needed. Here are my field test photos. Here are a few stats I gathered about A1 sales on eBay. Depending on where you are, your results will vary. This is a spot check taken on November 30th, 2016, and all prices are in US dollars. These stats include everything from broken to mint, and body only to bundles. Because there are so many being sold, I would stay firm on your price and be patient. Let's talk about some pros and cons. Pros. The A1 is a beautiful camera that would be imitated over and over again. Among the features I personally love include the black finish and the way it shifts between aperture and shutter priority. It has the right blend of mechanical and electronic. You can shoot in full program mode with a winder attached or turn off the viewfinder entirely and shoot in full manual. Cons. While I love tactile buttons, they are pretty crammed together, and a couple give me grief, like setting my exposure compensation. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider becoming my patron on Patreon. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and until next time, stay classic.